A fire broke out in the first refugee camp. Our tent burned down, but no one helped us. We went to another camp, but couldn't afford the rent they charged. And I wanted my kids in school, so we decided to go back to Syria. At the Syrian border, I was told to go to the political security office. When I arrived, I was forced to take off all my clothes and then forced into a one meter by one meter cell. They cuffed my hands behind me and beat me. I was electrocuted until I fainted. They put water on me to wake me up. After several days of this, they wanted me to admit that I was a terrorist. I was so scared. I agreed with everything they accused me of. They gave me the words and I repeated them. They brought me papers to sign and I just signed them. In detention, I was cuffed on the roof of the investigation room with my hands above me for six hours before they tortured me. I was never given a lawyer and was never taken before a judge. Military security came to our house and arrested my husband. He was imprisoned for nine months. When he was released, I knew he had been beaten. We asked him about the torture, but he had been threatened not to talk about his experience. He refused to answer when I asked him about the marks on his body. We were taken to our house. The house was ruined. We had no electricity and at night, we heard people driving by and shooting in the air to terrify the people. There was hardly anyone in our town. Our house was totally ruined. I tried very hard to get a job, but no one accepted me because I was on crutches. We went sometimes a whole week without bread. Prices were so high, it was difficult for anyone to find work. Transportation costs were so high. The electricity was on for just one hour a week. There was no gas. We couldn't heat the water to give the children a bath. The Lebanese government promised me that no one who returned to Syria would be harmed. They said my security clearance had been done, so it would be safe for me to return. Lebanon, my husband couldn't find work. The room rent was high. We didn't have furniture or equipment. We couldn't afford medicine. In Jordan, there were so many lockdowns during COVID. My work permit only allowed me to work as a barber and I couldn't do that at the time. I didn't have enough food and support for my family. It's so dangerous inside Syria. I have neighbors and friends who talk about the situation there. There's no means for people to live. No security, no safety. I have kids. I would never put them in danger and send them back.